deposits of various kinds and it's approximately an order of magnitude roughly 10 times the size of the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. Driven by atmospheric winds, material from Mount Pinatubo circles the globe within weeks. It will remain in the atmosphere for years, filtering out enough sunlight to reduce average global temperatures for more than a full degree for up to five years. For the Filipinos, however, there are immediate problems to deal with. Three weeks after the eruption, the number of people displaced by Pinatubo is put at one quarter of a million. Four months later, 200,000 are still in evacuation centers. Their return home complicated by the problem of volcanic mud flows, or lahars. The er eruption filled the valleys up on the volcano with a very large volume, estimated four to seven cubic kilometers of pyroclastic flow deposits. That's fairly loose ash and, and pumice fragments that fill the valleys in places uh, in at least one place, uh, up to more than 200 meters thick, over large areas, 30 to 50 meters thick. And these are very loosely consol consolidated and hot. Once rained upon, they are easily remobilized as lahar or mud flow. They come down the slope the rate of about uh, 15 to 20 kilometers and the density is about equivalent to that the flowing concrete. the months following the eruption, Philippine authorities fight a losing battle to keep rivers free of sediment. Once the channels are filled in, every new lahar results in widespread flooding. Estimates are about 650,000 people lost their jobs and about uh, 50,000 families have permanently lost their homes. This consists of uh, 10,000 Aitas, which are our cultural minorities, our indigenous people, and about 40,000 lowland families. These lowland families, their uh, places of residences have either been turned into riverbeds or they have been covered with one meter to four meters thick of lahar. The damage at Clark was so extensive the Air Force decided not to rebuild the base. Subic Bay was also heavily damaged. But the Navy decided it was too valuable to abandon. Millions were spent to make it operational again. But less than six months later, the Philippine Senate refused to renew the Navy's lease, effectively ending America's 100-year military presence in the Philippines. While no one expects another major blast, Mount Pinatubo has not yet gone down for its much-awaited 600-year sleep. Eruptions still happen, most are quite small. 
but some have required the evacuation of tens of thousands of Filipinos, and there has been loss of life. Property damage caused by mud flows may continue for a decade. Today, over a year after 1991's climactic eruption, Mount Pinatubo is generally quiet. Its huge new crater and lake serve as a powerful reminder of the violent potential of the natural world. For the scientists who had successfully predicted the eruption and helped save thousands of lives, there was real satisfaction, tinged perhaps with just a touch of melancholy. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of strange because, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm 33 and I've, I've had this incredible, incredible experience and, uh, you got to kind of wonder, okay, well, you know, what do you do for an encore? What else, what do you go to that's, that's bigger, you know? Tomorrow night at 8, Scientific American Frontiers looks at the endangered black-footed ferret, examines a heart transplant substitute, and goes sailing for therapy. That's tomorrow at 8. Now stay tuned for Frontline.